Well, come on in. Come on back in. Mm. It's adding, Narika. Come on, some light behind me. Some light behind me. <laughs> I got this saying. I'm gonna say it today. The devil is a whole lot. <laughs> let me get my oh, camera. Oh my god. Here. So I'm gonna go ahead and let some people come back okay. in. Okay. While I get set on my I'm I'm readjusting my camera. Okay, good. I'm gonna let some people come back in. And um, we're going to get started. Oh, Lord. Um. Hey, Sister Kim Carter. Hey, sis, how you doing? Okay. You know this is this must gonna be good tonight, cause I'm telling you, everything but the kitchen sink. But anyway, to God be the glory. I'm gonna let some people just come on back in. Okay. And um, we're going to uh, get started. Um, Well, it's good to see you, see everyone out there. I'm excited about tonight, about what God is going to do anytime, anytime. Anytime there is opposition and there is um, things that, be, that, that's, that becomes chaotic and it seems like it's not going to go through, you know that the enemy has tried to put a finger on it. But how many of you know God got his hands yes, on it? Hallelujah. Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> yes. God has his hands on it. It doesn't matter about the enemy trying to... Um, trying to come in so we're gonna go ahead and just get started because I, we are i am a little bit behind but i am so grateful tonight for all of those that are list looking and that will look at this replay i often say that monday matters was birthed a little over three years ago um due to the COVID, and um People were just waking up out of their, you know, waking up on a Monday saying it's Monday already and what's going to happen and who's going to die and, and just speaking all of this negativity. And so the Lord brought to, gave to me, he says, Monday matters. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that's really good because Monday matters. And I said, God, what are you actually saying? He says to tell the people to prophesy to the top of their week that I, this is going to be a good week. This is going to be a week that I'm going to be blessed. This is going to be a week that my family is going to be blessed. This is a week that I am going to be healed. This is a week that signs yes. of miracles and wonders is going to happen. Yes. I prophesy, I decree and I declare on yes. Monday. Yes, yes. that's good. So that's this good. is where Monday Madness was birthed from. So anyway, here we go. So I am so grateful tonight. Um, those that are looking and um, with me, I have a very, very special guest. 
I am a little biased. Yes. <laughs> because this is my biological niece through blood. This is my sister's daughter. And I am so happy to not just be embracing her tonight as my sister's daughter, but I am embracing her tonight as a woman of God. She is a wife to Pastor Derek Thomas and a mother and she is a first lady. She is um, a friend and I'm going to talk a little bit about that because she is some kind of friend and, and we know that the Bible talks about a friend that sticks closer than a brother and so I am so happy tonight um, by way of profession. She is a nurse she is um she's a counselor um she has she wears so many hats um she don't want to talk a lot you know she you know but it's down on the inside of her um i've watched and i've seen a flower that has been blooming for a long time so um this is um lady narika thomas she is from living uh witness ministries um, that is right now currently in the Milwaukee area. And uh, I am so happy to have my niece here on tonight. So tonight we're just going, this is a month of prayer for me because so much is going on. And I, I just feel like the, the last 10 months, but the last two months that we need to pray, uh, not not uh, December 31st. I'm not trying to pray in the new years. I'm trying to pray right mm -hmm. now before that time come. So here we have um, Lady Narika Thomas, and we are talking tonight that it was prayer. I'll, I'll start running at any time. You know I will. <laughs> it is prayer that brought me back to life. Mm. Thank you, um, Narika. I'm just going to go ahead and put this in your hands right now and just... Tell us what all this means to you. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for just allowing me to uh, be on your platform for Monday's Matters. Um, you know, we had a brief conversation before uh, about me and how God is uh, pushing me to the forefront because my natural nature is just to kind of work behind the scenes. But I believe that like you said, this is a time where God, if you're going to do anything you forgot, you better act on it now because the way the times is, God is coming back. So the topic about prayer and how prayer has brought me back to life, man, I can go through so many situations that I've been through that prayer has brought me through, not brought me over all the time. I didn't have to skip over the situation, but God has brought me through the situation through prayer. Um, and walking beside him. And, you know, the, the thing I, I, when I was thinking about the topic, I was thinking about just prayer in general and how sometimes I feel like God gives us these tools and these weapons Woo! that, um, I'm so um, sorry. you okay? Okay, I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> um, God gives us Woo! Jesus. I am so sorry. Just go right ahead. I'm okay, sorry. Go thing. ahead. Um, I, I think that sometimes God, well, God gives us these tools and these weapons to fight the enemy, to to conquer life, and and we don't use them to the to the extent that we should. We don't use them as often. We don't use them the way we should. Um, and one of those weapons is prayer. I think we have that right at our hands and we don't even understand the power that's behind it just when communicating with God. And so, um, you know, when you first get saved, one of the things is just something that you do. People just say you're supposed, supposed to pray. And the other thing is that what I found is, is that when you pray, most of the time you're asking God for something. But for me, when I prayed in those tough times, it wasn't always seeking God for an answer or seeking God for something materialistic. It was just the closeness and the intimacy that I gained through prayer, just sitting with him, 
um, and getting to know who he is and, and knowing who, what God, what God has planned for my life. It's like, for me, prayer and the word of God is, has to be used simultaneously. Like you can't use one without the other. And so in those difficult times that I've had, what I've found is that because I have to know what I'm praying about, who I'm praying about, God's character, what God is able to do, uh, what God wants to do about his grace and about his love and about his plans for me. I had to know the word of God to be able to then pray that so that the outcome of my prayer would be like the Bible says, an effectual fervent prayer availeth much. I wanted to my prayers to God not only just be in the air, just like aimlessly, that I had a target to God directly to say, my prayers is going to God, and then I have an expectation behind it. And sometimes we don't have that. So for very difficult times in my life, that prayer of going to God, knowing who he is, knowing how he feels about me, even if he don't fix the situation, even if he don't do what I want him to do, knowing that I line my will up with his will and that whatever happens, God's will is what's best for me, that I will, whatever situation, I will come out of it. So prayer to me is a tool that's not used as much as we should, as should. Let, let, let me stop you there because you said something and I, I, wanted, I wanted to go back to it. You said that prayer, um, um, like, helps you to get through some situations, you know. Uh, of course, it, it took you from one point to the next. But can you just kind of give us um, some type of, uh, give us a, a situation that you know that if it was not because you had, even when you were praying, you didn't, um, it didn't just, like you said, you didn't just, God didn't just take you over the situation. You literally had to walk through the situation, but it was prayer that got you through. Tell, give us, give us, give, tell, tell the people, you know, what, what happened um, in, in some situation that you know for a fact that if you had not have been praying, that um, you, you thought that you were going to maybe lose your mind, but but prayer prayer got you through. Tell us something that 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 you had to endure. Well, if, if we want if we want to talk about a specific situation, I think one of the biggest things, and I've shared this testimony before, and it's about when I was going through a divorce. Um, when I was going through a divorce, it was a time that you know I knew God but I was in a place of hopelessness. I was in a place of despair. And I felt like I was not going to be able to get past that situation. Or I felt like I was always gonna be sad. I was always gonna be depressed. I never was gonna have that joy that I was supposed to have as living a safe life. And through prayer and through God's word, little by little, because nothing happens overnight. It was a little taking a chunk here, taking a chunk there. It was um, praying. It was listening to my word while I'm asleep. I had the word of God while I was in prayer. I, I listened to um, worship music all day long. I, I bombarded myself with the word of God and God to the point that I didn't want anything else in front of me because I knew that it wasn't nothing but God that was going to bring me through it. And it was through those prayers and knowing that God was with me and, and God showing me some things through the prayers. It's like, no matter what, what you go through, daughter, I know it's hard, but I'm, I'm here. And no matter how you feel, I'm here. Because sometimes we feel like God isn't here. No matter what it looks like, I'm here. No matter the outcome, I'm here. And to know that you got the God Almighty on your side at all times, it gives you that sense of confidence and gives you that sense of peace. And you are only going to do that through prayer because it's, you need those quiet times with God to communicate with you, to shut everything out. 
I mean, that's the one thing I, I, I love about prayer is that it's like it's just me and God. And the world is just on the outside. But it's just me and God talking. And I can talk to him about everything and anything and pour my heart out to him and lay my heart before him. And through those rough nights, rough days, rough weeks, rough months, rough years, that it took me to get to a certain point of knowing that my prayers are now being answered and I'll see evidence of deliverance. Mm -hmm. Wait one second. Wait one second. Because that one right there, now that would have me running for yes. real. To know that you know that you have Abba Father, that you have the God of glory, that you have the creator, the one that made you, the one that woke us up this morning, that this one, this man right here, he will stand by you. He will lift you up. Uh, while, you were, while you were talking, um, on the flyer, it says um, there is power in prayer. And so this is what I'm hearing you talk about, the power that got you through um, a, 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 a divorce when you thought that mm -hmm. it was over, you know, mm -hmm. just because you, you, you was divorced, you had a husband, you had a, 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 a provider or whatever you had. And then now all of a sudden it's no more. And so now you're in a place of seemingly a dark place. But um, I, I thought about the scripture that says in Philippians one, four, six and seven, the Bible says, be anxious for nothing but in everything. And when I was reading this, in everything, in every situation, by prayer, petition, with thanksgiving. How in the world, how in the world do you go through um, uh, uh, um, um, uh, in a situation and thinking that it's for the rest of your life and just to find out that it's, it's no longer. And now God is still saying, Thank me anyway. That's, Thank, give me praise anyway. What but I mean, you know? And that's because, you know the, the flesh doesn't want that. You know what I mean? The flesh does not want to thank something when you're going through something that's bad or that's rough. How are you gonna thank thank somebody for something which could probably fix the situation? Because you know our God could do it, but He chose not to. But how do you thank Him? regardless of how things look when you're at your lowest point. It takes a mm. measure of faith. It ain't nothing ah. but faith that's going to make you continue to thank him and trust him no matter how you feel. And that's, and that's a challenge sometimes. Yeah. It's not easy. But that is what the, that mm. was the scripture says. And it says, and it says, because after giving thanks to him, um, what you were doing, he says, now you can go ahead and sit back and make your request known to me. And he says, and I'm going to answer you. Mm -hmm. So in the midst of every dark situation, like you went through the, the, the days, the, the weeks, the months, the years of that, but you got to a place where you said, God, here I am in spite of, yeah. I'm going to go through with you, mm -hmm. with you. I'm going to go through it. You know, um, I have you, there's another scripture, um, um, the power of prayer. Um, I don't know why I'm trying to see without these glasses because I can't, mm -hmm. um, John 14 and 13, it says, whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified. And so what I'm hearing tonight is that um, you went through for a call. I went through because for of where you are. But you know, and the, Go the, ahead. Scripture, Go ahead. the scripture that you just said about whatever you ask in my name, my name, I think that's one of the things that we forget because we go to God with these in self wanting, selfless acts of us wanting things the way we want. But again, if you ask him in his name, that means you ask him things according to his will. That means that sometimes you're going to have to not, do, not get it the way you want, but you're going to have to line up what you want with the way God's will is so that thing can really be blessed. And 
when I was going through, I wanted it to work out a certain way I wanted to work out. I, I had a vision of how it should have ended. I had a vision of how it should have played out. But God had a whole nother plan. And I'm so thankful that I yielded to his will. Because sometimes we go against the grain of what God wants. We struggle with God because I want it that way, but God's saying doing it this way. But all that do is stop the progress. And it can, it, yeah. can, it can stop you from getting to the thing that God really, the better, the, the better part of it. Because what we want may not even be nothing compared to what God has. Because what we think of as little, our thoughts is not his thoughts. Our ways is not his ways. Come so on, we have to be able to put our wills aside, put our selfishness aside and say, God, I'm going through, but God, what is your will for this? What is your will? How is your will lined up so that this situation can benefit not only me, but ultimately you and you can get the glory out of it? Let me ask you this. Let me ask you. This is a very transparency question. Mm -hmm. um, was there ever just a time, and even if it's just one or two or 15 or 16, but was there ever just a time where you just thought for a moment, God, where are you? Did God desert me? Did he leave me? Did he did he forget about mm -hmm. me oh yeah you know what i'm saying definitely i think i think we all struggle with that because we you know we you know god is this great big god like i said he can change anything within a second like it doesn't have to happen and you figure like why would god allow me to go through this if, if he's seeing me and he loves me then he he gonna do something so the fact that he didn't you kind of yeah. question like what well he must not be with me because he ain't fix this situation he ain't making the situation better so you don't have those thoughts but that's why i'm saying when you are praying you've got to have the word of god too to remind you of who god is and how he feels about you and during those times i had to go back to the word of god i had to go back and i mm. feasted on and i fed and I, and I and i and i digested it to the point where i couldn't let those thoughts get to my mind i had to cast those thoughts down and make them line up with the word of god like the bible says so yes you're gonna have those moments where you feel like god is not with you but oh he's with you god works behind the scenes and he don't work on our time you know what i mean yeah, and so part, right, part of our right. struggles and part of our situations is is teaching us character so it's patience that we're learning there is, yes. there is forgiveness that we're learning, long suffering that we're learning when we're going through our situation. So, no, God's not always going to act right away because he's building us up. That's right. That's right. I, I was thinking as you were talking, though, that scripture, and I know we quote that scripture back and forth, but it's such a powerful scripture. And it's a scripture that really will navigate us through life especially um, as uh, believers in Christ um, of Romans 8. Uh, for I know, Jeremiah 29 and 11, for I know awesome. the plans I have for you. Yeah. He says, I know. And the thing is, is, and what's so powerful, a lot of times we think that we know only because our flesh right. has so many desires. It's our flesh mm -hmm. that has so many desires, so we kind of take it in as if we know. But the Bible says, for I know the plans that I have toward mm -hmm. you. And so I just love that scripture. And so spiritual renewing and seeking God, I, I found this, this, this scripture, it says um, in Isaiah 40 and 31, but they that wait upon the Lord. And I know times for you, the waiting seemed like it wasn't going, going mm -hmm. to be. I mean, the, the scripture in the Psalms 30 and 5 where it talks about um, weeping may endure for a right. night. But joy, it's like, how long is yeah. my night? But, the, but, but what's so good about this scripture? And I know people haven't, I, I mean, I've kind of pulled it back in a uh, dissected in a different kind of way. Because I feel like 
it doesn't matter my night season. Jesus goes down in the night seasons with yeah. us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, he goes. I'm not talking about daytime, uh, afternoon, and night. I'm talking about the night season of our yeah. lives when there is a uh, 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 depression and an atrocity and and confusion and uh, uh, frustration and not knowing if we're going yeah. and coming. Uh, it's it's those night seasons. But even in those night seasons, God seems to He seems to uh, take us and shake us and say, "Listen, listen, I have plans right. for you." Right. And so here you are today. Oh, yeah. Here you are today, um, uh, a woman of God, pressing forth, teaching, singing, minister. I know that your profession is um, nursing, but I know that um, you, as a person, um, is a nurturer yourself. And and um, so um, I want to ask this question though. Uh, you, you're a wonderful friend, and I know that. And while I was trying to put some things together, I was thinking about how um, that was a very tough time, oh. a tough time of of, of losing yeah. um, a, 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 a friend, a sister, a confidant. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure some things she, you know, a, a one a wonderful woman of God, and so. Here you are after going through one dilemma uh, that you thought, okay, I have been through my dilemmas. Now, I said this about myself the other day. I said, I had a situation growing up, and I thought, that was a big dilemma for me. And I said, so then I had another situation, and I was like, that's a big, and I was like, Lord, can you yeah. just slow down with the dilemma? Yeah. Yeah. You know, because I mean, what else is you trying? But because God is like you said, is constantly trying to pull something out of us yeah. so that we might be what He has called us to be. Sure. Sure. So during the time, during that particular time, tell me, um, what was you thinking? Um, about God at that moment. Oh, you know, I, so, you know, that's, that's funny because that was a very hard time for me too. But when I want to go back to the divorce, when God brought me through that and I knew where my mind was, I was like, if God brought me through that, he can bring me through anything. Yeah, you're, you're, you're divorced divorce so the the, the the selena when my my friend passed away that was a little bit different in a shaking because um my prayers this is the thing about prayer you have to make your prayers line up with the will of god because my prayer while she was still here was for that her to be healed and to live on and I believed that, and I prayed it, and I prayed it, and prayed it, and prayed it. And so when that didn't happen, I'm going to be honest, my faith was shaken a little bit. It was shaken, and I had to go back to God and, tell, and say, you know, I did what your word said to believe and not doubt, because I didn't doubt him. Um, why didn't this come to pass? Why didn't this happen? And... You know, and I, and that's why I keep going back to when you're praying for something, it's just not always God's will. You know what I mean? You have to make sure, you have to understand that his thoughts is not our thoughts, his ways are not our ways. And so what I have to understand, even though we pray, sometimes the prayer is going to be no. Sometimes the prayer is going to be not right now. Sometimes, sometimes the prayer is going to be, yes, I can do it. But that's why you have to have a trust in God because my trust mm. in God meant that even if he didn't answer, don't mean he couldn't do it. And that his will is still better than my will. God knew mm. what needed to happen. I, from my eyes, I wanted what was going to make me feel good. But God had other plans and I had to be okay with that. It took me some time. But I am okay with it. And I know she's in a better place. I know she's sitting with Jesus. Like, 
she basically is where we all trying to get. She's where we, right. we all trying to get. And so right. now my prayer is like, Lord, just let me get, let me get up there to see her with you. So right. that was very, right. it was difficult. Um, and I'm, and I actually told someone this and, and sometimes we don't like to be transparent when it comes to this. I was disappointed in God. And I told God that I was disappointed mm -hmm. because I had an expectation and I believed it and I prayed it and it didn't happen. But that's the cup of God we serve. Like, it's okay for you to share that with him. He ain't gonna stop loving you. He's not like people. You know what I mean? He not like man. He will just, I understand my my daughter but i did mm -hmm. this because this is the way i want it and and he dealt with me in a way for me to be okay and not be angry and resentful about it mm -hmm. you know i mm -hmm. had to do my work and god did his part and i um it took me it took me somewhere that i didn't think i wanted to go but god has god has god has been faithful with that as far as how i'm able to deal with that situation yeah you know, um, it, it's really something, especially when it comes to that divorce or losing a child um, or losing just losing anything that is yours and you lost it is um, it, it can take you, move you into a grieving area. Mm -hmm. And um, you may have a prayer life, like you said, and you may have prayed and asked God about certain things and God he um, handled it the way he wanted to handle it, but God knows all yeah. things. I love to say this. I love to say that God knows the ending of a thing. Yeah. And I know for myself that I've been through situations myself and um, losing um, my sister, who was like a mom to me, your auntie, um, she was like a mom to me. And um, then I lost mama, you know, Mother King. And then I lost um, my sister-in-law um, for many years. We were just like sisters. And I thought everybody that I, I, I talked to, that I thought I could confide in, mm -hmm. that I thought that loved me no matter what, I thought that I don't care what I did, I could go to my sister and say the craziest things and she didn't judge yeah. me and um my sister-in-law she my sister she didn't judge me and i thought now all of these people are gone and i'm left with people that's constantly judging me yeah. and i said so god i said how is this how was this happening and then um i got into another current situation but what i found out is that through prayer, and this is what we're talking about tonight, um, it is prayer that 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 brought uh, me back to life. It is prayer that because I prayed when I didn't feel mm -hmm. like it. I prayed when I was when I had those questions yes. to God. I was I had tears running down my face, and I don't understand God, but 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 God, I love you. Yeah. I remember about two months ago, I was dealing with for the situation and the Lord said to me in prayer he said tell me you love me and I was like I, I love you but I was thinking about my situation and I was like you know I, when I wake up in the morning I was just waking up saying Lord I love you you know Lord I love you and throughout the day I was thinking about the situation and I kept hearing the voice and I kept saying but Lord I love mm. you Lord I love you and I began to say that until something really resonated down on the inside of me. So regardless of the situation that is here, that is set before us, when we tell God that we love yes. him, no matter what, yes. that's Psalm 34. Yes. That's our bless the Lord at all times. And it's crazy. It's going to continually be in my mouth. Even when I'm not feeling good, even mm -hmm. when I'm talking to somebody today, even when you got the bad news, yes. even when they turned you away, um, you things may have happened, but you still got to say, God, I yet love you. Yes. I, I yet love yes. you. I let yet love you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Glory to God. Many times God will take you. you no, know, God will remove people so that you can go 
directly to him. Because sometimes we rely on other people to help us through situations and walk us through. But sometimes God will, he wants us to go to him first and then he'll send people to us. But we sometimes we, we just put too much confidence in man. Yes. And the Bible clearly states that put no confidence in no man. He said, he said it. Don't put no, I am a jealous God. He says, put no confidence in no man. And I just, I, I thought about a couple, a few people. We're going to be wrapping up, but I thought about a few people that God answered. They went through some terrible, not really uh, terrible times in their times, but you know how, um, how, Oh, God heard Hannah cry. Mm. She couldn't. She was barren. She was barren, yeah. but she just kept. She she just. I mean, uh, and this woman that just kept. Panaima just kept doing all this yeah. stuff, but she stayed consistent. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what this is where God wants us to be in prayer. Yeah. Consistency means so much to God. Mm -hmm. Meeting Him, I'm finding out for myself. Um, and, 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 and people, people listen to me. We go to a job and we have to punch in at a certain time. And when you're not to dock or it's a currency or, 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 or it's a write up, it's something. And that's what God wants us to get back. He wants us to find a place, mm -hmm. find a time mm -hmm. to, and that we will meet him in prayer, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, yeah. meet him. It's consistent. Be consistent in prayer. And this is what, what she did. And God blessed her. And then what was so good about her story, she promised to give the child back. And that's what happened to a lot of us. Sometimes God blesses us after praying for some things and we forget about our promise. That's, true. that's to God. That's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. yeah. We, we, we forget. And so we go back to life as usual until another situation. You know, um, David found courage in so many times. And when he fought the uh, Goliath and became uh, the king, and then uh, he was in, at a place with Zacchaeus where he was able to bring Zacchaeus. It was a setup so he could give Zacchaeus to Jesus. And that's a lot of times that's what happens to us. God is always setting us mm. up. Your, 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 you went through your divorce. Okay, once married, once married to a pastor, you do divorce like a lot of like a like a lot of us, all of us, a whole bunch of us. But God said, I still have something for you. I there is still something that I have placed down on the inside of you, my daughter Narika. And so here you is now a, a first lady working in ministry, working side beside your husband as one in the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. I, oh my God. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna say that many times when we go through we feel like we feel like it is the demise of us. Like God is punishing us. And God is just strategic in his, the way he does things. You know, he allows things to happen. But it doesn't mean that it's, the ending is going, to be, um, is going to be detrimental. Sometimes the ending is, is better than what you had in the beginning. So uh, just to say that, yeah, it doesn't always, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to end well just because it end badly because it started badly. Yes, I, I, I wrote, that's good. I wrote down daily intimacy with God is a high priority. Mm. And I think that once we can just get our priorities back in place, and it's, 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 it's in prayer. I mean, Jesus took the disciples. He did all kinds of things. He showed them all kinds of things. Then he needed to go away so he can get with the Father to get more instruction, to get more directives. And when he came back, he said, Can I, could y'all not please watch with, with, with me for one hour? Yeah. And so I just admonish people on today to, if you're not doing this, start taking time out to pray. Five minutes. 10 minutes, 
build yourself up to 20 minutes, mm -hmm. a half an hour. And I promise you that there will be some things that God will show you. He will uh, let you know. He will help you through so many things. I'm so grateful mm -hmm. about prayer because I know that it is prayer that has brought me through many, yeah. many things. Yeah. I would not have. I, I, I should. I should be on medication. I right. should be. I should be. Thank yeah, you. I should yeah. be. I, I, I should be probably going, laying on the couch still. Mm -hmm. You know, I should yeah. be. I should be um, perhaps maybe in some type yeah. of place. But okay. God, who kept me in my kept me in my yeah. right mind. I thank God for it. He'll keep you in perfect you peace you. Oh, if you yeah. keep your mind stayed on him. Oh, so regardless of what you're going through, regardless of what people are dealing with all kinds of things, sicknesses, death, they're dealing with family issues, families that was once close and now they're this way. They're dealing with so yeah. much. But the only way, it is not through the alcohol, it is not through drugs, it's not through gummies, it's not through hookahs, it is not through sexes, it is not through men and women, it is not, but it is through God's yeah. word and through prayer. Yes, that's what true. do you got to say about that? I was going to say, all those things is a temporary fix. They're just a temporary fix. We need a long-lasting, everlasting fix, and that can only be provided through Jesus. But I, I do mm, want to I say something in regards to the prayer every day. And it's something that I heard that really helped me. And every time I get lazy when it comes to prayer, I think about it. I heard someone describe it like that. Sometimes, you know, in the morning, you start your day with prayer because you, the day is, is you have so many things that can happen throughout the day. You got people you got to deal with. You got, uh, you could get in a car accident. You can get some bad news. Your attitude can be bad. All these different things you can deal with. And you need the almighty God to help you, guide you, lead you, teach you throughout the day. So in the morning, it's almost like I have to have God to help me through the day. Like I know I'm going to need him throughout my day. When I don't acknowledge him throughout the day, it's almost like, oh, okay, I got, the, I got it. I don't need him. No, I can handle everything that happens. But when you think of it as, no, I want God to guide me through each part of my day, and I only can do that by telling him, telling him and acknowledging him and talking to him in the morning time and say, Lord, you protected me. Lord, you show me. Lord, you... You, you direct my path. Lord, you, you check my attitude. Lord, you close my mouth when it should be. Lord, you direct me to the person that needs to hear about you. Lord, you, you, push, you make sure that car don't hit my car. Lord, you protect my children. Those things you pray in the morning time so that when those things try to come your way throughout the day, God has already set the atmosphere so those things can happen. So you set the atmosphere in the morning time so that God can be with you throughout the day. Because again, like if you don't do it, it's almost like a sense of pride. Like I don't, I can handle this, but no, I can't handle it. I need God to look every day to watch over me and all my actions and all my thoughts and all my words and all my friends. So when I heard that, I'm like, yeah, God, I, I got to pray before I get up and do anything because I need the almighty God who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all the wicked activity to be with me and protect me. When you was talking, I just heard the scripture that says, in all thy ways, acknowledge, acknowledge him. him. In all thy ways, way. acknowledge mm -hmm. him. In all thy ways. The problem is, is that we want to pick and choose yeah. some of the yes. ways. But in all thy ways, acknowledge him. Yeah. And the Bible says, he shall direct thy path. Yeah. This has been so good. The, um, a deeper communication with God, going deeper in God, um, allowing God to be, as you said, on the, for the, the forefront 
it's kind of like putting um, a mm -hmm. layaway. You know, when you put a layaway down, you only got just a little bit more to pay on it mm -hmm. because you've already paid mm -hmm. on it. And that's how it is with the Lord. In the morning, I just heard you say, do it in the morning. Put a let, put it down. Wow. Put your layaway down in the morning. So when you go out to your job and you go out to different yeah. places and, and people are coming up against you and the Holy Spirit will speak to you and say, yeah. Yeah. I got it. Don't, don't do it. I got it. I, I, I got this. And so it, it just, you just, it's kind of like the lady that, that prays the prayer, uh, I command your morning. I believe that's Cindy mm -hmm. Tram. She says, I, com I, command, I command my morning. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so grateful today. Um, if you all are just getting on, please go back and look at the uh, replay. And please do share. This is Lady Narika um, Thomas from Living Word. Let me get that right. Living Living Witness, Witness Ministry. Living Witness Ministry. Living Witness Ministry. Pastor Derek and Lady Narika is at Living Witness Ministries in the Milwaukee area. You want to go, you want to be in that service of every, is it, can you tell us the time of your service? So we're having and service. the location. Um, it's on Saturday nights, actually. Saturday evenings, we're having okay. service at 5.30. It is, I'm, I don't have the address, we just started, actually. Um, it is on okay. 23rd and National. Um, the church okay. is, the, 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 the church is called Hope, Hope Church, but we are in that facility right now on Saturday. So you'll see the church on the corner. And I can also put it in the chat once I find the address. Please, please put it in the chat. Listen, this is Lady Marika Thomas. And we are um, here on tonight. We God bless you, Dr. Ruby. I see you, Evangelist Redman. Um, I see you all on there. Um, Didi, I see you. Um, we're talking, we were talking tonight. It was prayer that brought me back to life. And so sometimes when we are in dead situations and we just think that we are, it's, it's over. And they used to say it ain't over to the fat lady thing, but I got to beg the difference. It ain't over until God yes. says that it's over. And so I'm so grateful to the Lord to know that God will go in and he will navigate our life. He's better than a GPS. Come on. Yes, he He's better than a GPS system. You know, he will navigate our life. And what I mean by that, you know how sometimes when you are going through using your nav I don't know if this has happened to you. I've used my navigation and it took me like the long way when I could have gotten yeah. there much quicker, yeah. much faster. It has taken me all the way out the way because that's the system of sure. man. But when God navigates our life, when God take us through, um, uh, through it, you know, sometimes you, you may be driving and you run into a, a sign that says you got to go this way. Yeah, these detours. But when God navigates our life, he navigates us through. He gets us in situations, in the crevices of things. And he pulls us yeah. out with a mighty hand. He not only pulls us out with a mighty hand, but he pulls us out in our right yeah. mind. I just told you, I should be crazy. Mm -hmm. I should be on medication. But God, yeah. hallelujah, yeah, so glory good. to God. Look, yeah. we're getting ready to end, but I'm so happy. I want to tell you all again, if you wasn't on here earlier, this is my niece. This is my sister's daughter. This is my biological niece whom I am very proud of. And she is doing an amazing job. She's an amazing mother. She's an amazing wife. And um, you're going to want to hear her. She has a great testimony. That was just the tip of the iceberg. She has a book on the inside of her. Hallelujah. Glory <laughs> to God. And so we, I just want, I know I'm just prophesying. Come on. Prophesy. Yes. Prophesy. Listen. So we, I'm going to just have her to look in the, in the, in this, 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 on this, uh, uh, platform. Um, it is prayer that brought 
me back to life. Um, if you would just give one word and then just pray for the people regarding prayer. Yeah, so what I would say about prayer is that you, you have to pray out of yourself sometimes, meaning that you have to pray out of how you feel. You have to pray of out of what you see. You have to pray out of your circumstances and you have to go to the throne of grace boldly um to a god who is loving who a god that is caring to a god that is unfailing to a god that is faithful to a god that can do all things to a god that loves you and take when you go to god with your petitions you go you thank them you have an expectation and you just watch god move line your will up with his will so father god i thank you for this day i thank you for all that you've done for us god you are so good god there is no one like you in all the earth and god we give you praise and honor today God, there may be someone right now under the sound of my voice that is battling with a situation that seems impossible. They may be at the end of their rope, but God, I pray right now that you show yourself strong to them. God, I pray that they have a mind to want to pray without ceasing. Pray and believe. Pray and not doubt. God, I pray that that situation that circumstances is turned all the way around not only so that they can be be, be feel better but also god that you would get the glory and that then they will show other people and tell all everyone else about your goodness and what you're capable of doing god i yeah. pray right now in the name of jesus that you look upon all of us, God. We all are dealing with something, Lord. God, right now, God, turn the situation around. Show your show your faithfulness. Show your strong the, how strong you are in our weakness, God. You take yeah. over the situation. You know the situation, God. Do it in a way that no one else can be done. So they only that you would get the glory out of it. In the name of Jesus. Touch the mind right now, God, for the thoughts that come that shouldn't be there, Lord. Touch the heart, God, so that it is not hardened, Lord, that it's softened so that they could receive you in the name of Jesus. God, I pray all of these in your name, God, that you would get glory, that you would be edified in the name of Jesus, that you will be the ultimate person that we live for, fully, not half-heartedly, God, but fully for you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And if there's anything, anything within us that's stopping, any distraction, any barrier, God, I pray that you remove it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And you have your way, God, because only your way matters, not our ways. It's not our thoughts, God. I pray, God, that anyone that is, wants to have a prayer life with you, God, you show them, you teach them, you show them your word, God. Give them the, the consistency that they need, they need the wisdom and the know-how to, to build their prayer yeah. life in a way, God, that they have that intimacy with you and that communication with you, that relationship with you that nobody, no one can tear down. God, I pray all of these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Lord. Just even as we're praying right now, um, I want to just take a few moments, if you would just pray with me regarding our um, the late Bishop Cedric. Absolutely. Andrew. We want to pray for him, pray for his family. Father, we thank you and we bless you, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. God, we pray, God, for this dear, yeah. this family, this family, this uh, uh, supervisor, Valerie thank Daniels, you. Carter, God. We pray, God, for this thank family. We pray this church family, the Holy Redeemer Institutional Church of God yes. in Christ. Father, we pray in Amen. the name of Jesus, Jesus, God, that you would just give strength yes, under God. Under God. God. Have your way. that you would give strength.
strength, God, Jesus. in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, and there's so many others, God, that have lost, God. Thank we just pray you, in the name of yes, God. Lift them up, God. In the name of Hallelujah. God. In the name of God. Jesus. And God, we give you praise. Yes. We give you glory. Yes. Now I pray, God, for First Lady Narika, God. I pray that there would be no backlashes. Father, there would be no nothing that would try to come against her, God. Yes. In the name of Jesus, yes. we bind the handwork of the enemy the right now Jesus. that would try to come any kind of form of fashion. Yes. God, cover you. her in your blood. In name of cover her family. Cover her husband. Yes. In the name yes. of Jesus. And we give yes. you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you. I see you, Sister Andrea Barton. Father, I pray even now for Mother Barton and Dad Barton, God. I pray in the name of Jesus. God, even as she enters on, and I pray for her strength. I pray, God, as you begin to undergird her, God, even as she cares for her family, her, her parents. God, I pray in the name of Jesus. God, that you would touch. In the name of Jesus, yes, oh God, you are still a healer, yes. God. Oh yes. God, you're a healer. Father, you said there is healing Thank in your you. wings. I said, oh Absolutely. God, by yes. your stripes, and you're, we're already healed. Touch mother, God. Touch dad, God. In the name of Jesus, Jesus. oh God, bless that, bless that jurisdiction, in God. The in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Bless the cold laborers, oh God, and the God yes, God. In the name of Jesus, Jesus. oh God, we thank you right now. Thank Hallelujah! You, thank you, Glory thank you, to Jesus. God. Hallelujah! You, God, you know you. We know that you're able. God, you are able to do it speedily, yes, abundantly yes, above yes, all we could ever ask for. Thee, God, there is nothing too hard for you. Nothing. You are the God of all flesh. Oh, oh and we thank you. Jesus. We thank, thank you. you. We bless you, God. Thank you. Oh, God, help us, Lord, in, in the name, name of, Jesus. of Jesus. I pray, God, for Elder McFarland. Yes. I pray in the name of Jesus. Touch him now, thank God. You, yes, I thank you. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Do it for your glory, God. Thank Touch God. right now. Move right yes. now. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray for all those that are sick and afflicted. Yes, God. In Jesus' name, God, we thank you right now. Praise your name. Hallelujah. Praise your name. Thank you, people. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you all for you. Uh, being with us, joining Jesus. us, me with Lady Sarika Thomas. And please go back to the replay, listen to it, and um, pray for us. As I often say, look at someone that is on this uh, live on tonight. You may not know them personally, but you may see a name. This is the homework. Listen, look at somebody's name and pray for somebody this week. Call somebody's name out this week. Hallelujah. You don't have to know them, but just look and find, see a name that you don't know and call their name out. The prayers of the righteous avail it much. You don't have to know who, you don't have to know what, but just call yes. them out. The Bible says one of Jesus gathered in his name. He said, I'll be in the midst of them. So pray ye one for another. Amen. 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 God bless you. Bless you. God bless you, Tanisha. I see you. Love you. I see you, Renee Thomas. Uh, I see you on here. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Please share, share, share. Please share. All right? Get this out. Bye. Love you.